Another year, another badass lineup of amazing games. These are my top 10 best games of 2017. Now real quick guys, before I get into this video, just so you know, this is my personal top 10 best game list. More than likely, some if not most of you are in fact going to not agree with this list. That's perfectly okay. Almost every single one of us have differentiating opinions. So more than likely, there's going to be a game on this list you won't agree with, even not agree with the order, totally fine. But if you guys want to go ahead and leave your top 10 best games of the year in the comments below, you're certainly welcome to do so. This is just my personal opinion on the games that stuck out to me the most. Second disclaimer guys, I haven't played every single game that came out this year, so these following 10 games are only games that I've particularly played. If I haven't played the game, it won't be on this list because, well, that just wouldn't be fair. And one last thing guys before I get into this video, I did recently create a Patreon account. As many of you know, YouTube's Adpocalypse has seriously been hindering a lot of channels this past year due to channels not being advertiser friendly. This is especially true with gaming channels including mine. For whatever reason, YouTube deems many gaming channels just not advertiser friendly for whatever the reason is. So in order for me to continue to make you guys quality content, I would really appreciate it if you guys could just contribute one dollar a month by becoming a patron for me. Link for that will be in the description below, so please be sure to check that out if you can. With all that aside, let's get into this list! No. Coming at number 10 is South Park, The Fractured Butthole. <laughs> now, but all kidding aside, I loved playing through this game. I super, super thoroughly enjoyed the original, The Stick of Truth. I did play through that a couple times, there's so many comedic moments throughout that game, absolutely adored it, so when I heard a sequel was coming out, there was no question I'd be getting the sequel. Super happy that I did. There's so many comedic moments throughout this game that I genuinely laughed out loud, and many games out there really can't do that for me, because let's face it, most games nowadays just aren't that funny. But this one, I genuinely laughed so many times throughout my playthrough, and I loved every single minute of it. However, the reason why this game isn't really higher on this list, and why I'm starting out with this one, is because, well, this game is basically the stick of truth, but that's about it. It mainly just makes improvements to the combat, but beyond that, it's pretty much the same game. So if you guys really didn't like the stick of truth, you're most likely not going to enjoy this one because it is pretty much more of the same thing. Putting that aside, I absolutely love playing through this, loved all the characters, love the superhero theme, and the game pokes fun in a lot of pop culture references. Absolutely adored it. I definitely recommend you guys check this out if you can. Next up is a game that really wasn't that popular along an amount of people this year, but it really stuck out to me and it actually really blew me away with how good it was, and I was not expecting it to be this well flushed out. That goes out to Uncharted The Lost Legacy. So, gonna be honest with you guys, I only rented this game because I thought it was just gonna be another super linear, pretty fast paced Uncharted game. I love Uncharted games, I absolutely love the franchise, it's one of my most favorite franchises in gaming right now. And I really didn't pay much attention to this game up until it was already released, so when I got this I really wasn't knowing for sure what I was getting myself into. However, upon playing through the game, persevering through it, I was blown away. This basically is Uncharted 4, but from a new character perspective. It was really interesting to be able to play as Chloe and really developing her character, and you do get to know quite a bit about her. She's not just some stuck up and not giving two shits character like she is in the original Uncharted games. She actually has a lot more depth to her, and I'm really happy that this game explored that. But putting the characters aside, the game is absolutely gorgeous, just like Uncharted 4. I love the free roaming aspect of just exploring these huge ancient cultural areas and finding all these mystical artifacts, and it was just a blast to play through. So if you guys love Uncharted, no question, pick this one up, you'll love it. Next up is a game I am super happy the developers decided to just take a breather and take more time 
with the next game because as this one shows, the more time and care you spend developing a game, the more it's going to be enjoyable when it actually releases. That goes out to Assassin's Creed Origins. It's no secret that I'm a huge fan of Assassin's Creed, however, pretty much me along with almost every single other Assassin's Creed fan will tell you from the heart that the series has pretty much been going downhill pretty steadily, and it is something we were not too excited about going into the series' future. So when we heard that Ubisoft was going to be taking a year off, spending the extra time to develop the next game, it gave us quite a bit of hope, and it really shows in this one. Definitely, by far, the best thing about this game is the world. The world of Egypt is massive in this game. I mean, I cannot express into words enough how ridiculously huge this map is. I showed some people this map who were hesitant to get the game, and these two were blown away just from the size, scope, and the amount of exploration that goes into this. There's a super, super large amount of content in this, not just the story, side missions, but I just absolutely love, you know, when you're traversing across the landscape over to your next objective, and along the way you run into like 20 different things and you veer off your path to go check out some other things in the area. There's, you can really tell the developers put in a lot of time and care into this one. I'm super happy they did. To be honest, I was a little bit hesitant about the combat in this game, but there is a bit of a learning curve with that. But I do feel that this new combat is a step towards the right direction. Because, let's be honest, in the previous games, it was way too easy to take out your enemies. You felt unbeatable. In this one, you actually have to pay attention to the combat, but just like the character in the game, the more you fight, the better you get at it as a player. So in the end, it's rewarding. Now the gameplay and size of the map is enormous. The main reason why I didn't put it higher on this list is because unfortunately this game has been doing the same thing that pre the couple previous Assassin's Creed games have done, which is implement microtransactions via the Helix credits. I really wish they would just get rid of these because seriously, I played through Assassin's Creed Origins, I didn't have to buy a single one. I mean, the only reason those Helix credit microtransactions exist is to help you get through the game faster. But to be honest with you, that just ruins the experience. It's much more fun and rewarding to play through the game normally without having to buy these. So please, I beg of you guys, if you already have this game or are thinking about getting this game, avoid the microtransactions altogether because in the end, it's really not worth it. And a lot of people were worried that there's too much grinding involved. I am happy to say, as a proud owner of the game, there's really not much grinding involved. If you just do the missions and all the side content as normal, you'll get all the really powerful weapons and armor just as normal if you were to buy the microtransactions. So in general, absolutely love the game. I really hope Ubisoft does take this into consideration and say, hey look, the more time and effort we spend developing our games, the better it is in the long run. So I really hope the next Assassin's Creed game, we're not going to see one in 2018. I hope at the very least we'll see one in 2019, maybe even the year after. Because I think we can all agree, the longer you wait for the next Assassin's Creed game, the more quality it's going to be when it releases. Next goes out to a huge surprise for me, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Now this game is absolutely much better if you have a VR headset. The experience of it is insane. Just imagine you're alone playing this game with the VR headset at night and you have the sound turned up with surround sound headphones. It is a treat. I know many people that have just far out said they refuse to play this game because it is that scary. However, I am really happy that Resident Evil is going in this direction versus the crazy action-packed versions of Resident Evil we've gotten in the past couple games. So this is the Resident Evil that I personally been waiting for as many other Resident Evil fans have been waiting for as well. But I'm telling you guys, if you want to pick this one up, I'd highly consider getting the VR headset for it. You will not be disappointed. It is super, super fun to play through, even though at times it can be terrifying. There are many moments in the game where my heart was just absolutely racing, and I was genuinely scared. It takes a lot for games to scare me because, well, they're just games. But with this one, it really immerses you into the experience when you have the VR headset, and like I said, if you really try to garner the whole experience of it, you're going to love it that much more. So horror game fans, pick this one up, and if you can, get the VR headset for it. 
I promise you'll love it. <laughs> Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus. So I wasn't sure what to expect from this one. I thought Wolfenstein The New Order was pretty good. I did put it on my top 10 best games list previously because it is a solid shooter. So if Wolfenstein 2 I was like okay it's pretty much getting more of the same thing. Well technically that's true but it's also a lot more than that. I thought the story this time around was a lot more interesting. The guns in this game are fucking epic. So when they really take the story to new heights like they did, I was really blown away at some stuff that happened throughout the game. In the end, it's just a super solid shooter. It's not ruined by retarded progression systems like we've seen in other games, and I'll bring that up in another video. Ultimately, just a solid shooter. This game, in a way, reminds me a lot of Doom. Doom is how you do solid first-person shooter games. Wolfenstein 2 is how you do solid first-person shooter games, and I really hope other developers look at these kind of shooters and take it into consideration what it takes to be a solid shooter. Well, and also, the game is violent as hell, and I loved every minute of it. Near Automata, or Automata, or Automata, whatever the hell you call it, you guys know what I'm talking about. Super, super, super solid Japanese hack and slash game. It does have a hint of Devil May Cry and some other hack and slash games you guys might have experienced before, but this takes it in an interesting direction. So you really play as these androids far in the future, but with really unique weapons. And in a way, it is kind of ridiculous how crazy the weapons get, but it just makes it that much more fun. There's not just melee combat, there's shooting combat mixed in between with it, and you really just feel like this badass warrior. The story as well is also very unique, and to be honest, it is pretty interesting. Also, the game is a lot funnier than I would expect. In a good way, not cringy, but there's genuine moments in this game where I laughed, in a good way, and I was like, this is actually very enjoyable to play through, and the boss fights are actually really solid as well. But keep in mind, this is one of those games where you do kind of have to turn your brain off and just play it solely for the gameplay and just hack away at enemies. This is just simply a solid hack and slash game from beginning, middle, to end. And to be honest with you, I didn't want it to end. The game, for me personally, was a little bit short, so I really hope for the next one, they take this one, they take its roots, expand upon it in the next one, make it super long, and I guarantee you it may be a contender for one of the best games as well that year. And it has a super badass soundtrack, but I actually have bought the album for. It's that good. Cuphead! Well, so this basically goes to show you that any developers can be right up there with other AAA developers. A lot of people have actually avoided this game simply because of the difficulty, which I can understand. However, like I've said in previous videos, difficult games, as long as they do it right, want you to try to persevere to try to get through the difficult parts. It's difficult, yes, but it's difficult just enough to make you go, man, I really want to get past this. And that feeling when you finally do get past those difficult moments is so satisfying. And you can just tell the love and effort put into this game by the people that created it. You can just see that as you're playing. And it just goes to show you, you don't need a huge budget or this huge team of developers to make a super solid game like this. So for those of you guys that are kind of on the fence about getting this, I highly recommend you do and recommend it to friends. I'm telling you guys, this game's fun experience increases tenfold when you're playing it with other friends. I had a blast playing through this with other people. Even though we died pretty frequently, it was still super fun to play with other people just because of the style of the game and all the crazy stuff you can do throughout it. I absolutely adored it, and I even am looking forward to seeing if they create a sequel to this. And I hope other indie developers take a look at this and try to reference the type of quality this one has on their games. And that's something I'm really excited for. Super Mario Odyssey. I was not expecting this to be that good, but it was. This is a solid game. 
It's not overly reliant on graphics, even though the game is pretty looking. It doesn't have this crazy complicated story. This is a solid platform Mario game. I loved it. There's so many really unique and really cool ways you can try to get past certain puzzles. The worlds you go to are unique and interesting. And you can just tell the developers behind this really, really enjoy creating this game. I mean, there's just so many unique ways that you can play this game that every single player's experience is going to be a little bit different than the other. So how do you usually get past this puzzle? Or how do you usually get past it? There's multiple possibilities in how you can play through this game, and it's ultimately up to you how you get through these. And I do really like how you do kind of have to use your brain how to get past certain parts. But in the end, I just love the aspect of getting past certain parts in the way that you see fit, as long as you're able to just simply get past them yourself. So overall, I really do think Nintendo killed it with this one. If you guys are a Mario fan and are considering getting this, absolutely recommend it. Number one and two, I constantly flipped back and forth. I was like, man, this one, no, this one, no, this one. So just so you guys know, two and one were really, really tough for me, but number one just barely won over number two. Number two goes out to Horizon Zero Dawn. Beautiful graphics, check. Large open world with tons of stuff to do, check. Solid gameplay, check. A story that's unique and interesting, check. A character you actually care about? Check. This game pretty much had everything I hoped that it would be. Seeing all the videos and trailers leading up to it, I was super stoked to play it. And I'm super happy to say that my expectations were not only met, but they were exceeded when I got my hands on this. Aloy's character is super interesting because she starts out as this scared, feared little girl, but as it goes on, she really becomes a badass warrior that really is ready to take on anything. And the enemy types in this game, also known as the robo-dinosaurs as people like to call them, super, super cool and interesting. And there are many boss fights throughout the playthrough, and they're super badass. There are many times of this game where it was super hard to get past a certain enemy, but when I did, super satisfying. That feeling of beating an enemy that's, you know, 100 feet tall, and you take them down with a bow and arrow. I mean, how much more badass can that be? It is crazy to think that the same people that made this game made the Kill Zone games. That just goes to show you that developers should try to experiment and broaden their horizons, pardon the pun, when making their games. If you really have an idea that you think is super fun and super interesting to play, go for it. And the fact that this game is already greenlit for a sequel makes me that much more stoked for it. If you guys love open world games, action, interesting stories, characters, free roaming, exploration, pick this one up, no questions asked. So with all the praise I gave to Horizon Zero Dawn, I'm sure many of you are wondering what can possibly be even better than that. I'm guessing some of you already know what I'm going to say, but that has to go out to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I only just got to play this game recently, and let me guys tell you, this is one of my most favorite free roaming sandbox games I have ever played. The possibilities are endless in how you play this game. How do you attack certain enemies? How you get past a certain puzzle? There's just so many different routes you can take with this. When I heard that this time around, Link loses his memory and awakes far in the future, I was a bit hesitant about. But after playing through the game and really understanding it, it really is kind of nice a clean slate for newcomers to come in for the Zelda franchise. And I just love the art style of the game. The world is very, very beautiful and interesting. Oh yeah, and it has a super badass soundtrack, but hey, we all come to know this from the Legend of Zelda series anyway. I am a huge Zelda fan, and when I saw this coming, I was super, super worried it wasn't going to meet my expectations because it is one of those early release games on a new console, but super happy to say that it surpassed my expectations in every single way. So if you guys don't own a Nintendo Switch, please, please, please try to get one as soon as you can and get this game. Because I'm telling you, 
This game I'm going to use as a reference for many upcoming Fruit Omen games to compare this to, because this is how you design a near perfect Fruit Omen game. It is not perfect, it does have minor flaws here and there, but overall, it is just, so I really hope other developers and they are looking to create a gorgeous free roaming game, one that's super fun to play through, if they use this as a guide on how to actually create one. So again, if you guys haven't, highly recommend you get this as soon as you can. Well, that does it for my list, guys. Those are my best games for 2017. I'm also going to be making a video of my top 10 most disappointing games of 2017. And oh boy, there sure were a lot of them in this year, but I can only narrow them down to 10. So stay tuned for that, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be sure to subscribe.